From point of view, as I'm holding another article today in which her picture with a book with many comments from the public is published, saying I kept the article on my office table. Author point of view, Mr. John, the invitation of the seminar is there as he said, his eyes shone with glimmer as his many hands went up to his tie losing it. Why am I going crazy to see you? Standing in the seminar, he was holding a glass of juice. He was wearing a red suit that fit his body perfectly. Just then, people started to clap while praises were heard from every corner, as beautiful as her words. The real star of today's youth, I'm desperate to hear her voice now. Wearing an elegant dress of blue and white print with your curly hairs falling on your shoulder and an innocent smile on lips, you held the mic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Her voice was as sweet as her spare. Her speech was too short for the ears who want to listen to her each second. Her round eyes smiled with her lips when people started to clap for her again. She respectfully bowed, placing her hand on her chest. His eyes never left her figure. No doubt, but my heart felt her right and it went crazy for you. He sucked on air and whispered to himself. Layla, yes, Mr. John. The secretary who was standing beside him spoke. I haven't selected the head of new project, right? Mm, the book one? Then no, it's still pending. He nodded his head. Then it's not pending anymore, Lella frowned. What? But instead of answering her, he marched towards the direction followed by Lila. She was standing beside a few businessmen and the woman's when a figure caught your eyes. He was walking in your direction. His presence was already holding a devilish and blooming aura. Your eyes met his, but because of his continuous gaze, you looked away as you started to feel your cheeks getting heated up. Finally he stopped just in front of you and before he could speak, one of the businesswomen beside you spoke out. What a pleasure to see Mr. Joon on this beautiful evening. Chung tilted his head, nodding. He didn't answer her back. Instead of it, he turned to you and moved his hand forward to shake. John Tuguk, CEO of social media side, he also moved your hand to shake it with his. Who oh, I am and we still need your introduction. His lips stretched up, making you look down, pressing your lips in a thin line. His big burning hand is still holding your hand. He noticed your gaze. He moved his hand back, clearing his throat. Oh my god, Miss Wyan, I'm a big fan of your books. Chung Secretary beamed, taking your hand in her. You smiled nervously. Until now, you are standing alone with Chung and his secretary while others left to talk to other ones. You can call me Wyan, no need for formality. Ayla nodded with a smile. And where is that manager of yours? What was his name? She rubbed her head thinking, did someone miss me? Kevin? Oh yes, Kevin. Oh, so that's you. Your personal manager walked to you guys, shaking hands with Jungwoo and Lila. Lila eyed him up and down. Kevin noticed Jungwoo was looking at you as he wanted to say something. But his and Lila's presence was making it a bit awkward, so he thought of something. Well, when there's a beautiful lady and a beautiful evening, I don't think we should miss the chance. So when I have an issue to talk, he pressed his lips together, gesturing Lila to go with him. Lila's eyes became big when she understood his gesture and went with him. And you're standing alone with Chanka. So you do know me. You frowned. I mean, before meeting today here, you also know about me that who I am. Actually, yes, I do have heard much about you. The way your website always came up with unique ideas for youth, and it does fascinate me too. You and your employees are truly hardworking. I'll take that as a compliment, but the real fascination right now is not me but you. You called when his hand brushed with yours as he was standing too close to you. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, why not? How much I have heard about you. You don't waste your time like this. Wherever you go, you do have a purpose. Chung bite his lips, controlling his white smile. Well, you have heard right about me. And right now, that must be associating with me. Your confident little took him off guard, but it fascinated him. Until now, women don't talk like with him. Either they got too nervous or flirty, but no one has been this straightforward with him. Now that's true too. You smiled and tracked your shoulder in victory. You chuckled at your behavior and pulled a card out of his pocket. But I would love to discuss the details on your visit to my company. He offered you and he grabbed his card. What about the next week? Great. Chung talked a little bit with you. 
and then you remembered that you have some remaining schedule so you went there but this son chunk was already living rent free in your mind now why do you give the vibes of man in my books it's already been a week and you're here to visit the company after reaching you got to know chunk was busy in a meeting because his specific time was and decided for your visit then lala gave you a tour of building You are fascinated by the texture of interior and also exterior of the building. After that, she brought you back to Chang's office while her mouth didn't stop blabbering about one of your book, which is her favorite. Sorry for making you wait. He walked inside the office, removing his coat, handing it to Lila. He got up to shake your hand with his, but your eyes stuck on his stretching muscles and those buttons of his shirt, crying for mercy. Your cheeks start to burn. Is it gone off? No. You cleared your throat when he eyed your red cheeks. You can see that little smoke on his face. He rolled his sleeves up just below his elbow. Now his veins were visible with those dark, colorful tattoos. You felt like you were getting inspiration for a new book. How the new male lead personality is going to be? Should we sit and discuss? You're not trying to look away. You sat in the guest chair while he sat in his. Well, I kept the file in front of you. After opening it, you signed some sort of contract of a collab. As you have saw this contract now I want to work with you on a new project of writing book on our website. You know your head biting your lip you thought then I also need a team for work as I'm not similar with working on a website. No problem we only need your one sign and everything will be ready for you to start the work. Then I'm ready to work with you Mr. John. You smiled as you looked up and saw him smiling too. First time you saw him smiling this widely, even his pictures in all media of serious postures. Yes, but wait, where is Kevin? It's been a while you're working with Chunk's company. You and him got along pretty well. In last week, he asked you to have a dinner together, and you both went for it. With professionalism, you also get to know him personally too. And guess what? He's somehow changing your thoughts of fictional men not existing in real life. They do exist but with flaws as its reality isn't it Chanku entered his office as he was sitting on the couch working when you place your tap plopping yourself on the couch beside him cover of book you gave him hint about by your hair and his frown went away nodding he yeah, almost forgot He rubbed his head popping out you know since he was tired as his shirt two buttons were open and his hair was literally going anywhere but not in balance you also realize how hard working he is that many times he forgot about himself while working and you also don't have someone who will care for him he do have friends but it's not like they will stand on his head 24/7 to check on him so he shook your head and snatched the pen and file out of his hand Fine, I need to complete that. He spoke softly, but you kept it away. Have you eaten lunch? As you asked, he rolled his eyes. No, I was working. Give me that. He moved forward to pick the file. You picked that file and hid it behind you. Now, first you will have lunch and then work. When stopping childish, I'll know. He moved again, and now he was so close to you. He was turning left and right, hiding the file. A smug smile plastered on his lip. I will not let you be tickled. When he started to tickle you with one hand, his other hand went behind you to grab the file. No, stop. His arms are longer than yours, so his hand easily reached yours as he grabbed your hand. He you lost your balance and fell flat on the couch. With him hovering your figure, he was stopped giggling after realizing that position. Your one hand was on his chest while his face was so close to you. As you will move an inch and lips will be on yours, its eyes stared at yours. You called to them. His mainly scent hit your nostrils, making you dizzy. You felt as a mist of wind passed through you. As you blinked your eyes, a beautiful melody of a song started to play in the background. His dry lips were just in front of your eyes. You can feel him and his thumping heart because only your heart's beating. and brief voice were audible in the room you felt him cleaning and slowly and slowly your eyes start to close as the dizziness of his scent took or your mind his lips brushed over yours just then it clicked damn it i told you to stand quiet as you both heard their voice quickly you both sat straight and stood up from the couch i we didn't see anything here is ella 
Yasuo didn't see that she was almost and her mouth got caught by Kevin's hand pulled take her leave. He dragged her out leaving Ibo alone. She didn't look up being nervous. They eat lunch please. Saying this she got up to leave the office. But suddenly her eyes were caught up and your shrug back falling on his chest. His hands snake on the back of your vest grasping it tightly. Your hands fell upon his chest. Chunker. He breathed at your neck as he leaned and tilting his head, your mouth slightly open to speak, but nothing came out of your mouth. I won't have dinner with you tonight again, but at my home. Your breath hissed, and you almost gasped as husky whispered in your ear. His breath tickled your skin up and down. He slowly backed off his nose, brushed with your side cheeks. He faced you with a grin on his face. I need an answer, he said tilted, his two eyes were not more into siren but glittering waiting for your answer. He felt paranoid and hypnotized by his eyes and not his food. His funny smile stretched over his lips. Great then, let's go back together after all this. When after finishing talk his hand didn't sneak back, so he slowly backed off, feeling emptiness without his warmth. He spoke out with a girl. I'll go to my office. He almost saw a pout forming on his lip that he replaced with a serious face. Sure. It was already evening and you were already in Chunk's house with him. The drive on his way home was filled with project improving talks. Today, because of nervousness, you've made a slight mistake as the scene in his office was playing again and again in your mind. You talked about that to Chunkhook and he laughed, saying, It doesn't matter. You notice somehow you always ignore your flaws and appreciate your hard work and talent. Ignoring someone's flaws isn't an easy thing until or unless you're mentally and emotionally attached to that person that their flaws become invisible for you. Somehow you knew in what direction this all was going and you don't want to deny you like it where destiny is taking you. You chucked on a glass of water placing it back on the table you realized being all engulfed in your thoughts you forgot where Chung told you the guest room was. Did he say right or left? You're sitting here for 5 minutes now, so you just stood up and decided to check yourself. Walking in the hallway, you saw your rooms. I should put just the guest room here now. You just went up with your inner voice and ordinarily opened the room and make a clicking voice. Yes, that's it. You entered the bedroom. It was all clean. You thought this is the one, but when you focused on the room designs, you realized it wasn't a guest room, but his room. As his pictures with his friends and family hang on the wall, his different pictures of boxing, working out, fishing, winning a medal in a college to the award businessman of the year. You raise your hand up to his recent picture of winning an award. You love to go hard on yourself. Your beat skipped when you felt a presence or his presence behind you. His tattered hand raised and fell on your own picture frame. You know me so well. He whispered standing too close to you that you can feel he wasn't wearing a shirt as he pressed back. His fresh body wash scent hit your nostrils. You were no more hungry as butterflies in your tummy replaced it. You intentionally made yourself an open book for me. His hand softly grabbed yours and his turning you around. You were faced by his bare chest while the water was dripping from his hair down to his neck and trailing down to his torso. You gulped at the view, he chuckled in a raspy voice. Your little mind doesn't let you rest, right? Your eyes didn't realizing you were openly drooling over him and he noticed it. No, no, I... And you stutter in nervousness when your thoughts are caught up by me. Now you only want to take your curve here and now because of embarrassment. You giggle watching your tomato face. Nothing is wrong with staring at what's yours. You can sing this, he wore his sleeveless top and went off the room. Did he just... Wait, what he even said just now. Also quick, tell me, what do you want to eat? Chef Joan is ready in your service. You healed her from outside, shrugging your thoughts, you went to get fresh. Wow, I didn't know you can cook this good. Here's Paul tasting the dish he made. He had a split smirk on his face after looking at your reaction. You haven't seen my plating yet. She raised your eyebrow at him as he placed a royal design plate on the shelf and placed the food in it. 
Then Fred saw on it with a few sprinkles of black pepper and then he threw a few green the leaves of herb on it. Ta-da! You clapped your hands smiling while eating. We both joked around about a few things Brandon you asked him about his boxing practice and a few pictures that you saw in his room. Uh, that's when my mom took it when I was 16. I thought when I made my soul net then bells will ring around us and she laughed while taking pictures of mine and I also laughed at the silly thought of mine. It sounds like a scene from a book. You spoke while giggling, then can't I be the man from your books? You froze at your place but then he laughed out. Don't take me seriously, he bite at the fool looking down but you are still focused on his word. Right now, you and Chung were stargazing, sitting on a specific place. Isn't stargazing so comfortable for a man? It is. Both spoke in low voice, and it will be a sin to talk loudly. Chung, hmm? why you chose to work with me? I was about to speak. Don't say because I'm so famous these days and people like my words. Don't. I want your words. The silence engulfed, and he went quiet. I didn't want it, it neither. I search for it. But love, your heart skip a beat when I first saw you. At seminar? No, at the beach at night last year. Your heartbeat become fast. So he saw you at your worst. Last year was really struggling for you as no one was ready to give you a chance to prove yourself. But you didn't give up and now you're here. It was only once and after a little time I started to see you in magazines and articles on social media too. But the night was just stuck in my head. You are like a moon in this. Always there was a part of you hidden. But I had that urge to see the full of you without any part of you hidden. He looked at you and then at stars. That's why I met you at seminar proposing and offered you. That's why I always ignore your flaws because they mean nothing to me. Then only I'm the one to see that hidden part of yours. I felt lucky from last few months. As you start to get close, without realizing I went in deep and deep of this emotion. I fell for you at that specific night while your tears were streaming down your cheeks while it started gazing. Your heart became soft like wool by its words. You don't need to be a man from my books. Chung looked at you with his two eyes having a whole galaxy in them because they are fictional and you are real. You are not written by a woman from her dreams but being birthed from a woman who taught you how to deal with reality. Chung smiled cupping your cheeks as you closed your eyes with calmness flooding you. You felt his foamy lips falling on yours. I promise to stick with you until the end either it's fictional or reality.